This Steve Jones Show podcast is now loading. The Steve Jones Show podcast is presented by Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, and NIL Game Changers. Bringing you an in-depth look at Penn State sports and more. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. The Steve Jones Show is presented by NIL Game Changers, Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, and Brewers Outlet. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. It's only a rumor, but I think that I, we're looking into the video. We think the suit used bumpers that way. No. This half hour. Brought to you by Purdy Insurance, Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com. Auto home life business, boat, motorcycle, RV. They'll make sure you're fully insured. They'll do everything they can to save you money. Customer service means everything to them at Purdy Insurance, Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com and Always a privilege to be joined by the best in the business, our good friend Dan Baker. Dan, welcome back. It is so wonderful to hear you with us again. Oh, Steve, thank you. Every time I hear that great voice of yours, I think of Penn State football and basketball. Well, thank you. Very kind. I appreciate that. Uh, I I want to do this from a little slightly different angle. What? When you're up there doing your incredible job and you're the best at it, how much time do you really have to watch the game? Oh, uh, Steve, I can really watch and enjoy it. Um, You know, sometimes my work can come in bunches, you know, multiple changes during a game. And, of course, if... The Phillies, uh, as most Major League Baseball teams, uh, usually have an extensive pregame. And uh, I do it down on the field. I think I'm one of the few of only uh, Major League Baseball PA announcer that does it from down there. And uh, it can be uh, fast-paced then, and there's a lot going on. And, uh, you know, a, a pretty thorough script to follow. Uh, but uh, during the game itself, now there was a time uh, when I was hired by Bill Giles to start at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia in April of 1972. Uh, not only did I perform the public address announcing, but I also operated the game, the game in progress scoreboard. <laughs> All strikes, outs, runs, hits, errors. You don't need to be a genius to do that, uh, and but you do need to focus on the game, and then you're, you're I mean, you're into every pitch, and you have to follow it. And uh, when Bill hired me, he said, "Now, it's very important that you are uh, up to speed with this. You get the information up there quickly and accurately." And I said, "Bill, if you hire me, I'll be the quickest and most accurate in baseball." And I was for the 32 years that I did that at the vet. And then uh, Steve and Todd, when we moved over to Citizens Bank Park in 2004, they separated those jobs out. So I don't Mm. uh, run the scoreboard anymore. And now it's uh, uh, announcing, which is still uh, a, a job one needs to pay a lot of attention to. But Steve, un like you and uh, so many wonderful friends who do play-by-play on radio and television, you know, you have a lot to say. And, uh, you know, it's not just you can wait for each batter to come along before you make an announcement and then kind of uh, relax a little bit and watch the game. No, you're going the whole time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say that my job is is not nearly as difficult as yours. Each each job has its own challenges. Believe me, you are great at what you do. 
Uh, and that the opening question was now to set up this question. And it is, now you've told everybody that you have a good chance to watch what's going on out there. What do you think of this team yeah. so far in this limited time that we've seen in the Phillies this season? What do you think of them? I think they're a good team. I think they're going to uh, make the playoffs again. Um, they're a veteran team. They have some. They have a nice mix, Steve, of uh, uh, veteran players. Uh, you know, like a Kyle Schwarber and Bryce Harper and uh, pitcher Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola, and, uh, and then you have you know. Second baseman Bryson Stott, third baseman Alec Bohm, mm-hmm. center fielder Johan Rojas, and uh, you know young pitchers like uh, Christopher Sanchez, uh, Ranger Suarez uh, has a, a few years experience but uh, is somewhat young, and uh, I think there's a good combination there that most good teams have that combination I don't think it can be all veteran or all youth you know uh, it's got to be I think a good mixture and of course we have a wonderful manager uh, career coach Rob Thompson a Canadian uh, who uh, has just wonderful has done a wonderful job and uh, this year Steve unlike last year the Phillies have gotten off to a decent start. You know, they're second place in the NL East, uh, which seems to be a familiar position because the Atlanta Braves seem to always win the NL East. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think the Braves are quite as strong this year. Even though they're off to another outstanding start, uh, the Braves are like 17-6. and six. Mm-hmm. Now, the Phillies are... Second place, sixteen and ten, two and a half games back. But last year, Steve, at this time, the Phillies were already like ten games out. Right. Uh, the Phillies had slow starts in both 2022 and 2023, and um, you know the the Braves uh, and the Mets had quite a battle. Uh, uh, two years ago, and then last year the Braves just ran away with it. I think the difference this year, I wouldn't be surprised if the Phillies, getting off to a decent start, uh, overcome Atlanta and end their long winning streak as NL East Division champions. So this this year, Steve, I anticipate that the Phillies will get into the playoffs, but They'll go in as uh, NL East Division champions. Uh, in my broadcasting class that I teach at Penn State, I I impart to them early on, and this is you know you can you can challenge me on this if you want, but I tell them take care of the little things, and the big things will take care of themselves. For you on a daily basis, what are the little things that you take care of? That in presentation, which is the big thing, takes care of itself. Well, thank you for the question, and I think I couldn't agree with you more. Um, And I think those of us who are fortunate uh, to have lengthy careers, uh, it's because you've been able to do a decent job, and people appreciate it. And uh, they like they become comfortable with the continuity and, and the tradition. Uh, but uh, t- to answer your question precisely, one of the things that I do, Steve, uh, I get there two hours before the game, um, and uh, I'll, I'll read through my script and I'll read through it several times. And uh, for like pregame script, and also like commercials, I'm going to be reading between innings sometimes, and uh, I'll familiarize myself with um, every word. And if there are any words that I don't know how to pronounce, you know, I'll go back to the source. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, our marketing people or director of entertainment who wrote the script and uh, ask. Now, usually, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good with most words. Uh, right. the, the, 
the names that uh, some, I sometimes need help with uh, are, you know, people's names or, or companies. Yes. Um, and, and the same, you know, with the players themselves. I will read through, uh, you know, the rosters uh, and, you know, because you, you do one team 81 games a year, in my case, the Phillies, um, you know, there might be a change here or there, but it's usually, you know, only one or two. Whereas uh, for for the visiting teams, with which I'm not going to have that everyday familiarity, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I have to look at them a little more closely. And there may be three or four names on each roster that, you know, I haven't seen before or I'm not sure of the pronunciation. And so Major League Baseball provides a, a printout uh, uh, with uh, phonetic spellings of most yes. of the players. Right. And the only players that may not be on there are those who – uh, were recently brought up from the minor leagues. And uh, now, even those, uh, sometimes I have a question. You know, one person's phonetic spelling, Steve, may be different than another's. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I like to hear, uh, you know, the yes. name myself. And, and, and yes. many PR departments, as you know, uh, with uh, doing play by play, will provide. Uh, audio yep. Uh, yep. of uh, of the name so you, you you have that also i like to hear it i, I guess i'm old fashioned in that respect myself uh, from either you know the pr person one of their broadcasters uh sometimes i'll uh, ask the manager or one of the coaches or a writer or sometimes even the player themselves or a teammate yep. Uh, and uh, I'll, and I'll ask them to repeat it a couple of times, you know, just so I understand the cadence, yeah, you know, um, some and and where uh, is the emphasis placed? Is it on the first syllable, second, third, mm-hmm. fourth? If it's you know uh, multiple syllables, and uh, so I, I make myself comfortable with, with all of those names. And and that's exactly the same way I go about it. More and more college programs are, when you just go to their base team roster on their website, actually as the player pronouncing the name. Well, that's a huge help. With Penn State, Mm -hmm. I make it very simple. I walk up to them and I say, okay, give me a roadmap here. What am I... (laughs) <laughs> tell, tell me what, tell me how to do My favorite was Amani Oyuarie. I said, okay, I got the Ooh. Amani part. I said, I got the Amani part. I said, I said you're going to have to help me now. And after five tries, I finally got it. <laughs> well, you know, Steve, another thing, boy, that is one of the all-timers there. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, and I do the same thing. I'll say the name over and over until I'm comfortable with it. Uh, and so that when I say it, it, it is without hesitation. And uh, so w- w- when you can say it convincingly, convincingly, even if you're not 100% correct, uh, I think people, you know, it's like an umpire making a decision. You know, yeah. you make the call. Oh, he must be right. He was you know, so authoritative. <laughs> so, uh, you know, or, or or what I've done sometimes if there's a tiny bit of uncertainty and uh, my research hasn't made me comfortable with the name, you know, I'll say it very quickly. And then it's like, did, did he say what? Uh, you know, <laughs> so they can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> but I I I don't I, I'm saying that some, mostly humorously because yeah, uh, yep. you know I and again see I have a lot less to say than one of the broadcasters right so you know it, I better focus and get right you know what it is I have to say uh, and uh, with more time you know in between to consider you know what i'm saying what i'm announcing uh or if or if i hear somebody saying it differently we a lot of times have the radio and or uh, tv 
um, play by play on in our fan division score oh. room, scoreboard yeah. room and uh, usually my pronunciation uh, mirrors uh, mm-hmm. what is being said on radio and TV sometimes I'll hear a little bit, bit of a difference and if I do hear that hear a difference I will try to consult other sources yeah. uh, to see whether I could be mistaken right well uh, you were I, I, I was at a Phillies game this is oh, a couple years ago and you were doing the pregame it was scorching hot and it was humid and he's out there with a jacket and tie acting as if it was 55 degrees with a light breeze seamlessly going from read to read and making the program thoroughly entertaining for all of us that were sitting there hey, hey that's a real pro doing that when that when I'm sitting there going god damn it's good <laughs> I'd be sweating oh, bullets down you, there <laughs> well, you know I've been brought up in that tradition yeah, uh, and you know my father, uh, you know, uh, wore a coat and tie on ma- in many many occasions, yeah. and uh, and a lot of the sportscasters that I grew up with and were mentors for me, Steve, uh, wore coat uh, coat and tie. Yeah. Now, of course, that's not the case anymore. Uh, right. So now it's it's considered like old school, but that's the way I did it. And I also thought, Steve, as I attached a certain amount of respect when I saw a gentleman uh, dressed well, you know, I, I remember as a kid thinking, well, this this uh, guy's got to be important, yeah. <laughs> you know. And now maybe you know that you you can't ascribe that at all times to one's appearance. Or presentation, but that's what I grew up with, and and I think people do attach a little more respect to you if you're dressed well, if you make a good presentation. You know, it, it, you know, we were always told that was important in an interview. Mm-hmm. You know, the the appearance that you present. And uh, I, I still think it's true. Maybe it's not as true as it once was, uh, but I still think when you see somebody, you know, male or female, mm-hmm. who is well dressed and takes pride in their appearance, that may impart to you that uh, they also take pride in their work. You know, uh, that, that they're organized and they pay attention to detail. Well, this is the consummate pros pro right here on top of his game every day. Dan, it is always a privilege, not just a pleasure. It is a privilege when I get a chance to talk with you. Thank you so much for your valuable time today. The audience loves you, and they loved hearing from you. Thank you, Steve. And uh, may I say, your audience loves you. Uh, And uh, I I get excited. Of course, my wife was a Penn State graduate. (laughs) Yeah. we're ready for the Nittany Lion Inn to open again. We love to stay there. <laughs> that's but, right. Uh, I, you don't have to know when that's going to reopen, do you? Uh, what, when they redo the stadium? Uh, everything's... Now, yeah, well, well, anyway, it's so great uh, being up there, uh, the atmosphere... And and then and Steve, you convey it so beautifully. Oh, thank you. And uh, you can't Thanks help a but uh, become a Penn State fan uh, when you're listening to a Steve Jones call. Well, thank you, Dan. That means more than you know. Coming from you, I take that as gold. Thank you so much, my friend. And please tell your wife I said hi. And I can't wait to hear you at Citizens Bank Park. Thank you. Make sure you stop by, Steve. I will. will you please? I will. And say I will. hello. I appreciate the invitation because I will take you up on it. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome, Steve. Have a great day. You too. The legendary, and I and that is the highest compliment you can give. The legendary Dan Baker.